Hey, welcome back into today's video. We're going to be talking about a TikTok woman who's being accused of using a man's tragic passing for views. She's posting multiple videos in the fast food drive through trauma dumping to strangers. She's calling this man her husband, but apparently he's not. And not only that, but when people ask her what happened to her husband, she says it'll be out in her new book. This is one of the strangest rabbit holes I've went down in a while, and not everything is as it appears to be in today's episode of Exploring TikTokers. If you're unfamiliar, Lisa Mia goes by Chin Up Sunshine on TikTok. She has just under 10,000 followers, and her mission on this TikTok channel is to change people's lives through empathy and poetry. Every single one of their videos has to do with telling a very tragic story, the same one over and over again as you'll see, where she says her husband Rob was sadly taken in one of Florida's most high-profile criminal cases. Many claiming she's unstable and clearly using his passing for clout. You'll also see people saying, why don't you have photos with your husband? One of the things that I see that I do have to pause on is when she says things like this. One user saying, is there somewhere we can go read a story? To which she says, yes, Amazon and Kindle, where my book will be released soon. Another user saying, not you trying to capitalize off his passing. Another, for real, is this all a scam? So there are definitely some questions that need to be answered and all of this started when one of the videos she posted went mega viral. It garnered over 1.8 million views. And before I show you this video, I do want to say, make sure that you watch the entirety of this video before you form your complete opinions. There are some things that are bizarre and wrong and there are some other things that uh, you need to see. I actually like to pay for the person behind me. Today is um, National Day of Remembrance for Homicide and my husband was brutally killed so um i just wanted to give some love today and i hope that you know if anybody that you lost and i, I feel like there is somebody and she's watching you she's watching you all the time and she loves you so um this is for the people behind me <laughs> i know <laughs> I actually record these things. Can, can you say hi? Now, this is the strange thing for me anytime somebody does something like this because as they're crying and as they're doing this, they're also recording themselves crying from the distance and getting people's reactions, which makes me feel like it's disingenuous. Hi to people. And that's another thing is, is that she did put somebody on camera without asking their permission. And not only that, but she said their name to now 1.8 million people. That's odd. One user saying, I'm so sorry and can't imagine what that's like, but do not do that to literal strangers while they're working. Another saying, this was my retail nightmare. I'm sorry for your loss though. You know, at first glance, it seems like a kind thing to do. You're paying it forward, but then you got to calculate in the fact that Again, she's recording this. And if you were truly just paying it forward, then why does it need to be televised in this way? And another thing is, is that it looks like she was sharing this brutal story with a 16 year old Starbucks employee on the first job. And it's not very common for people in situations like this to flip the other person off and tell them to, to go on. Like most people are going to be nice in these situations and tread very carefully. And I don't think it's okay to put people in these types of situations. I think a little self-awareness goes a long way. The fact that you're recording this makes me realize you overshared purposely to get reaction and views. And since this went viral on TikTok, TikTok users had a lot to say. So we just trauma dump on strangers? Baby, just say you want to pay for the person behind you. What was the point of that? I think what makes this really bad is the fact that she took out her phone and recorded this whole situation, saved a video, uploaded it on TikTok, added music, then posted it. Like, I'm sure this barista was probably thinking about her homework assignments or her classes she may have to take in the evening. I don't know. Like, I don't see what was the point of releasing this information to a random person you don't know. It's the I don't know if you lost anybody. Baby, you don't know her. You don't know if she lost anyone. That's why you need to keep your mouth shut. And then, and then you, and then you put that person on the spot and turn the camera on them. But why are we trauma dumping on a Starbucks drive-through to a 16-year-old barista? You could have just said, "Hey, I would like to pay for the person behind me," and just left it as that. But you had to add that not only was your husband killed, but brutally as well. 
You put this poor girl out of position because you don't know what she's going through. You don't know what you are going to say to her. And I do agree with that because in situations like this, it's never a good idea to dump these types of uh, feelings and emotions onto people and strangers specifically that you do not know in situations that you're not familiar with, like drive throughs at fast food chain restaurants. It's better to pay for a therapist because that's what they're there for. And not only that, but they're equipped to handle these types of things. But you guys let me know what you think in the comment section below. Lisa's response to this was to say that oversharing in this way to her and in her community is not a burden. She said this. I wanted to take a second in this video to remind you that we are running a charity this year on any video that says fundraiser at the bottom. And we have surpassed the goal, which was originally 1,000. We're currently closer to 3,000. And it's to help children in difficult situations to prevent them from being harmed. You don't have to, but if you do have an extra dollar, let me show you how to do it. To the right on desktop below on mobile, click donate. There are pre-selected amounts, or you can go other and just click $1. And your card should already be connected to your YouTube account. Just click donate. And my logic says since there's thousands of people that watch my videos that if people did just do $1, it should jump up significantly. And I'm interested to see how much it does. And if you have donated, and if you do do this, let me know in the comments section below. Post the turtle emoji, the positivity turtle. All right, back to video. seeing this term a lot trauma dump trauma dumping oversharing I want you to know that what you share here and what I've been seeing from all of you in your experiences your experiences your trauma or loss your feelings they're not a burden to me not here in this community they are something that I respect tremendously, and I thank you each and every. I don't think that people were saying that uh, people's issues didn't matter. I think they were just saying there's a time and place for everything, and that your boundaries are your boundaries. But not to forget that other people have boundaries too, and specifically in situations like this, you don't know what those are. And things are about to get really weird. When I started looking through Lisa's TikTok, I noticed something. Not only was she oversharing in every single video, but she was saying the same thing. My husband was murdered in one of the most gruesome homicides in Florida. My husband was brutally murdered in one of Florida's most gruesome homicides, answering questions of- Actually like to pay for the person behind me. Today is um, National Day of Remembrance for homicide. And my husband was brutally killed. This is Rob, my beautiful husband, who was brutally murdered. Take me and I've never been the same made me question things as a trauma does it's going to pay for the person behind me okay. and i lost my husband this is the first time that i'm really coming forward eyes bright lips electric rays from within sharp and eclectic hey. answering questions about my husband's brutal homicide husband Scar when the grief of losing my husband becomes too great i talk to him I say, we can't grow old together anymore, but we can grow timeless. And in our published poems, and in my completed book, Ready for Print. And then things get real weird when people discovered that this person wasn't even ever married to this guy. But nowhere in the case material, nowhere in his obituary, and no official documents exist claiming that he has a wife. In fact, Brewer's family members have gone on record and said that they haven't spoken to Lisa in years and that this is all a bid for attention and to advertise her book. His family don't know you. Allegedly, they are horrified at what the you are doing on these social media platforms. One Redditor saying, I have no idea if she's really a grieving widow. There's no wedding documents and nobody heard of her before this year. I don't know if Brewer has any surviving family that could corroborate her story. I don't have TikTok and honestly, I don't want to find out if she's lying. She's either a very sad person grieving the brutal passing of a loved one for 13 years or a worst example of TikTok's scummiest person. You have people in her comments saying, let's see the wedding photos in the book, please. Where was the honeymoon? 
You're truly sick for lying about this man. You need help. And on top of this, it was very obvious that she was plugging her book. There's a trend going around TikTok where you put down the book, you finish writing your own damn book, so the good people of Book Talk have something new to read, all right? Answering questions about my book related to his murder. I am going to self-publish. Forcefully bonding yourself to that man by saying that you are his wife is crazy. You wanted to be his future wife. Y'all were just dating. And when people ask you about what happened to him, you're telling them, okay, it's going to be available in my book, girl. One person saying, is there somewhere we can go to read his story? She said, yes, Amazon and Kindle, where my book will be released soon. Another saying, not you trying to capitalize off his passing. For real, is this a scam? Another saying, that's exactly what she's doing. Normal people mourn for their loss, not promote it for her money. It's even in her TikTok bio. I even found some conversations on Reddit between users where they were talking about how people have reached out to the family. Apparently people have been contacting his family on TikTok. He dated her for a minute, but was dating, or kind of with someone else when he passed. They don't know this woman, and they're straight up horrified at what she's doing. Another Redditor claimed they'd spoken with another TikToker who had contacted Brewer's family. According to this tale, a cousin had answered and told her that they had not spoken to this woman in years and that the video upset many of the family members and that she was only doing this for attention. And one of the things I like to do when I'm making these videos is to double check these things to make sure there's conclusive evidence on what the people are saying. And this is hopefully the point in the video where I'm going to make a lot of things clear. Nearly every single person who said that Lisa was lying didn't have solid evidence. And in fact, they said that people spoke to the family, but only provided screenshots of the person saying they did. Other people were just quoting some he said, she said stuff. I looked everywhere for some type of evidence where somebody was talking to the family. And not only did I not find it, I likely found evidence that Rob and Lisa were actually engaged at some point. Let's start here. Husband, wife, partner, spouse. These are not just legal titles with paperwork. It's so much more. When souls, usually two love each other so much that before the government gets involved, their union is already signed in commitment to each other and sealed with a verbal promise of loyalty through ups and downs, successes, joys, challenges, and whatever life throws. So this was Lisa saying that no, they were not actually married uh, by law, but they were uh, spiritually. People didn't buy it, called her insane, and said, snuck that no paperwork in there. But actually, this checks out. In a post made by Rob's mother on the Memorial Facebook page, here's his mom saying, Merry Christmas, my son, I miss you so. Here's the mother posting a poem saying, this was written by Rob's fiance years ago, citing Lisa Marie Brewer. Another person saying, so Lisa was his fiance. We are trying to clear the air up on TikTok because this lady is promoting her book by saying Robert was her husband. And when I searched this memorial page, there were also several other posts that corroborated Lisa's story, including pictures of Lisa and Rob together. On Lisa's TikTok, she posts the last text from Rob. Rob saying, you made the happiest man alive actually the happiest man alive. Go figure. Corroborated by Rob's mom posting this on the memorial page. Rob's cell phone I thought was broken turned on. This is one of his last text messages to Lisa Marie back in 2014. And another thing that stood out to me is all along my research in this video, everyone was saying that she wasn't in the memorial page or any other documents when when I went to look, she was everywhere. There were even pictures of them together on the uh, obituary. Here's the main obituary. If you go to view the pictures, there's Lisa. Here's another one of Lisa. And again, Lisa again. There could be some confusion with the name, but let me clear that up. She goes by Anne Marie here. Lisa Mia on TikTok, on the obituary page, she posted a comment under Lisa Marie Fusco, calling herself his future wife. Lisa has two other social media accounts, Instagram and TikTok, both that go by Lisa Marie Fusco, and again, Lisa Marie Fusco. Here's a 2014 post from Lisa Marie Fusco about Rob, and not to mention that Rob's family is all over the comments on TikTok, and I don't see how people overlooked this. Here's Rob's cousin in a fight here saying, uh, Rob does know her and so do we, the family. Her and my cousin Rob were together. And not only that, but Lisa's most recent video on TikTok is her showing a photo collage of her and Rob's family. 
my Google Drive and give you a sneak peek at some of the photos. Up here is Rob's mom. She is the strongest person I know. So the logical conclusion is obvious. We know what was and we know what Rob's family and Lisa agree is. Even though they're not legally married, they probably would have been. And at the same time, I do not agree with her using Rob to promote her book. But if I had to find a reason for why she would be doing that, it could be because she really wants his name to be remembered and this is her way. But clearly there's something wrong in this situation and everybody grieves in different ways. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I can honestly say some of this doesn't look good and is probably harming others in the process. But I think there's something else also important here and that's the fact that I don't understand how people on TikTok can go and attack this person with their full chest, not knowing all the context and all the sides of this. Did nobody worry about if they were wrong? Did nobody worry about that they were going to put this woman through more issues and more PTSD that she was going to have to work through and reopen old wounds, mocking this woman to her face? How does no one think about that? I think I want to agree with that one person who said social media makes people crazy because, listen, this situation is nuanced. There's some weird things here. There's some things that are off, but there's also conclusive evidence that this person's telling the truth. So we're going to have to go back with everybody grieves differently and uh, understand that. And you guys making these TikTok videos with opinions based on non-conclusive evidence should remove your videos. Lisa, I hope you get the help that you're looking for. I hope this video can help clear a lot of things up and people can stop uh, harassing you online in the way that they are, at least to the depth that they are. I hope that you also be self-aware in the way that your message is being perceived and how it's looking in some aspects because uh, you could really end up uh, putting somebody in a difficult situation. That being said, and as interesting as this is, there's always something that's more interesting to me. That's right, you guessed it. I want to know what you think. So why don't you go ahead and leave your creative and interesting responses in the comment box below. Thumbs up, those likes as always, brothers and sisters. I will see you in the next video. That was a lot. Uh, I, I do want to say that I am sorry that it's taken me a minute to post another video. I'm going to try to post more videos this month and kind of get back into a flow. Um, I've not been very consistent this year, but... I'm going to change it. I'm going to get back in there. I also have some things that I want to say. Uh, and as of course, uh, thank you to my patrons for your continued and ongoing support. We're currently at 50 patrons. I would like to get to 60 patrons. I'm fixing to do some live streams over there and I have some other ideas. I have a new chat and literally we just talk on this chat. It's open to everybody and you can join the patron for just a dollar. And I'm about to do a lot of new things over there. And uh, if you want to help me meet the goal and support what we do here on this channel, I will put the link to the Patreon in the pinned comment and I'd love to see you there. Also got some new things coming out to do with Polaroid cameras. And if you want to hear about that, we're talking about it on Patreon. I had to reshoot the ending of my video because my camera, it ran out of time and I didn't know. But uh, if you guys do want to get your name at the end of my videos to support the channel, then uh, join the Patreon. Like I said, it's only a dollar. Uh, and that's just another way to show that you're repping it. And if you're not repping, you're Gregging. And how you do that, I get a subscribe notification turned on. Be in the comment section of every single video because I'm going to be there. Greg the Cat's going to be there in spirit and the rest of the Repswell community as well. And I expect to see you there too because this channel loves you. Good old clap outro.